Hi everyone, my name is Alexis Krauss and today I'll be reading Nature's Invisibility Cloak by Edwin Barkdahl from Nautilus Magazine. We'll be meeting sea creatures with real powers to go unseen. The lore of invisibility has captivated humans for millennia. The Egyptian god Amun-Ra manifested as the transparent wind which could be felt but not seen. The Greek philosopher Plato's magic ring granted invisibility to a shepherd who then usurped the throne. J.R.R. Tolkien's one ring bestowed its wearer with the power to vanish and dominate others. Even today, invisibility ranks high among desirable superpowers. And why not? It could confer the ability to hide from one's enemies, prevail against competitors, or achieve tasks that would otherwise be impossible. Of course, despite mythologizing and coveting it and seeking technological solutions beyond a magic ring or potion, humans have not mastered invisibility to become transparent. But transparency has not gone undiscovered by natural selection. It has evolved independently in unrelated animals, including octopuses, arthropods, and fishes. Despite the animal's differences, they have followed similar transparency recipes to reap the benefits of being unseen. Animals are complex, material beings, and even the tiniest among them can stub their figurative toes against other objects. So how can they go undetected and blend in with their environment? Superficial camouflage employs mimicry, disguise, and concealing or disruptive coloration to avoid being seen. In essence, camouflage tricks the viewer into misperceiving the hidden animal. Not to cast aspersions on camouflage, it can be a highly effective survival strategy and can be used by large animals. But it only scratches the surface of deception. Transparency veils an animal from view, but is also a deeper ploy the entire body, surface, and inner tissues alike must work together to become clear. Perfect transparency is not necessary. Viewed from a distance underwater, even a translucent octopus becomes invisible, and that can make all the difference in survival. An animal must accomplish two primary feats to become transparent. First, and most straightforward, it must minimize the light it absorbs. Second, it needs to reduce the amount of light it scatters. Jellyfish are poster creatures for transparency. They are simple, thin-bodied animals whose bodies are 95% water. What oxygen they need is absorbed directly from surrounding water, eliminating the need for light-absorbing respiratory pigments like hemoglobin. Half-inch long eel larvae sometimes called glass eels, also lack these pigments. The larvae aren't as waterful as jellyfish, but their bodies are almost leaf-like, which allows oxygen to diffuse the short distance directly into their bodies without hemoglobin or gills. However, there is a practical limit to how far oxygen can diffuse through tissue, and as the larvae grow, their metabolic needs outstrip this simple mechanism. They begin to produce hemoglobin, reducing their transparency. The heavy lifting task of becoming transparent is reducing light scatter. Consider a handful of table salt. A single salt crystal is clear, yet the jumble becomes opaque in a pile. As light passes from the air into a crystal, and then as it exits from the crystal to the air, the light bends from its original path. Consisting of many haphazardly oriented crystals, the pile of salt diffusely scatters the light and appears white even with no pigment. Transparent animals are either very simple, says Sonke Johnson, a visual ecologist at Duke University, or they have to work to minimize these differences in refraction. Eel larva organs are tiny and inconspicuous, lacking the complexity that will develop with age. Animals including juvenile fish, aquatic crustaceans, and squid adopt similar strategies. 
Even the most transparent animals may possess gonads, eyes, and perhaps a gastrointestinal tract replete with their last meal. All these organs interfere with concealment, but there's a limit to how much can be eliminated. Some small octopuses further camouflage their guts and eyes by altering these organs' shapes and orientations. Glass octopuses keep their tubular eyes and needle-shaped stomach oriented vertically in order to appear less noticeable to predators below. Transparency is prevalent in many juvenile marine organisms, providing much needed protection from predators. Eventually, the development of more prominent, complex organs and a need for respiratory pigments brings an end to transparency. One more thing to lament about growing old. A salt is transparent. You could probably read through it. Nevertheless, it remains visible, particularly around its edges. Why? Just as differences in the refractive indices, the degree to which light bends when entering or exiting a medium, of structures within an animal are important, so is the difference between an animal and its surroundings. Put the salt back in the ocean, its natural environment, and it disappears. Salps, comb jellies, and jellyfish all mainly consist of water. And in water, the salp's refractive index is nearly the same as its environment. When held in comparatively low refractive index air, though, the salp is visible. Can an animal be large and transparent? There are physical constraints on size and transparency. No substance is perfectly clear. Some of the light passing through it is always lost, even if this is imperceptible to a casual observer. It's for this reason that the deep ocean's bottom cannot be seen from the surface, no matter how clear the water. An animal is no different. A meter thick jellyfish loses its transparency because of this simple property. Cone jellies several feet long do exist, but they are a half inch thick at most. And those salps can form long chains. If you could convince them to line up and let you look through them like a pirate with a spyglass, the view would be cloudy. Sonke Johnson calls this his favorite mating mystery that of the glass octopus, who must copulate to reproduce, yet are rare, nearly transparent animals in a very large ocean. Johnson asks, how on earth do they find each other? Nobody knows, but another translucent octopus species, Japatella diaphana, has a solution to that dilemma. Females develop a luminescent organ as they approach sexual maturity, perhaps functioning as a reproductive signal to males. Are terrestrial animals missing out? The short answer is mostly. Some aquatic insect larvae, like those of dobson flies and phantom midges, possess temporary transparency that is lost as they mature and leave the water. The significant refractive difference between air and animal tissue is virtually insurmountable with few exceptions. Among the exceptions are the wings of many flying insects, which are transparent by virtue of having little or no circulation, being only a few cells thick and sometimes possessing anti-reflective structures. Whether this serves as a you can't see me function combined with disruptive coloration or predator avoidance or some other purpose is unclear. Even humans partake in a limited but essential way. The transparency of our corneas, lenses, and the fluids that fill our eyes is critical for our vision. Not surprisingly, the characteristics that favor transparency in aquatic creatures also feature prominently in our eyes, the gelatinous parts of which are 98% water, a figure that even a jellyfish would covet. There are no light disrupting structures between our corneas and retinas and no jumble of refractive indices among the eye's tissues. It's an ironic twist of convergent evolution that we use the transparent tissues in our eyes to look for transparent animals. If you're lucky, you may glimpse a tiny shimmering dobson fly larva in a stream or an undulating comb jelly in the ocean. But if you see nothing, Look again, someone may be hiding in plain view.
Wow, that is fascinating. As someone who just loves evolutionary biology and marine organisms, it's fascinating to learn about how these organisms do these things, things that we just totally take for granted. Um, I would love to be invisible one day, one day. Um, thanks for listening along with me. Uh, currently, you can check out Texas, our latest album, and, and keep an eye out for some new music. Um, and if you're in California, come hang with us at Just Like Heaven Fest. Have an awesome day.